Hey, what's happening guys? In our last video, we talked a little bit about how we could use a magnet and a coil to produce an electric current. And we talked also about one of the key points in understanding electricity, that is magnetism and electricity are linked and really cannot be separated. Where there is one, there is the other. If you have moving electrons, i.e. an electric current, then it is going to produce a magnetic field. And if you have a magnetic field and you move it, you're going to get an electric current. They're linked. There's nothing you can do about it. And it was discovered centuries ago that a certain rock called magnetite, or they called it lodestone, I don't have any here, you just have to imagine a rock, uh, possessed these quantities. And Oh, who is the guy? Who is the guy? Um, Peter something, I forget. He found out that steel could be magnetized and different materials could be magnetized. And we found out that there are quite a few materials that could be made to be magnetic, but very few materials that would remain magnetic and therefore be a, a permanent electro electric magnet. Uh, permanently magnetized. Um, there are three different types of magnetism. Well, there's really there's magnetism, but there are three different types of objects or properties that we can talk about. In, or, in order to really talk about them and understand them, we have to kind of grasp one concept, and, and it might be kind of hard to grasp, but just go with me on it. Anything can be magnetized to some degree. You can be magnetized to some degree, okay? To some degree. That doesn't mean that it's going to be a noticeable amount of magnetism, but to some degree. So there are three, we'll call them levels of magnetism. We have things that are called ferromagnetic. And they can be easily magnetized. A piece of steel, a piece of iron, nickel, cobalt. These are all ferromagnetic. Then we have paramagnetic. And things that are paramagnetic are considered slightly magnetic. Aluminum is paramagnetic. And then finally, and this is for Mike, we have diamagnetic. Diamagnetic is the strangest of all of these. Diamagnetic materials in the presence of an external magnetic field become slightly magnetized, but in an opposite direction, so as to repel an external field. Okay? I know, it, it's really weird to kind of try and get these things in your head. Now, here's where it's gonna get even weirder really only one true test as to whether something is magnetized. You have any idea what it is? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? It's not attraction, okay? Because a static charge can cause attraction. It's repulsion. An item that is magnetized will repulse another item that is magnetized when like poles are put together. That's really the only true test. And because some things are diamagnetic and kind of um, exhibit this property, that can be a little bit confusing. But when we're talking about things that are strongly magnetic, such as ferromagnetic materials, is a piece of steel magnetized? Well, it is magnetized only if it will repel something else that is like magnetized with the same pole structure. Now another main difference between a static charge and a magnetic charge or a magnetic field is a magnetic field is polar. This magnet has a north pole, it has a south pole. If I were to split it down the middle we would have another south pole here and a north pole here. 
okay? Now, the, another cool thing is that the flux, the magnetic lines of force, run from one pole to another pole, and we can show that quite easily. This bar magnet, and we'll just put it under this piece of paper, and then I have some iron filings here. I know the classic third grade science class demonstration, but it works. Looks like it wants more. <laughs> but the ones I want you to look at are not the ones that are close to the magnet, but the ones that are out here. Here's our North Pole, here's our South Pole. You can actually see the lines of magnetic flux as they travel from one pole to another. And you can see the distance that they are covering. I mean, if we take and put a scale on that, we're looking at uh, 12 centimeters or so there. That's a pretty good deal. Now we can do the same thing with a horseshoe magnet. Relatively strong Alnico horseshoe magnet. And we'll put it under the piece of paper with the poles facing that way. And then we'll get our iron filings here that are on this page. And I didn't pour them well, did I? No, I didn't. We'll see if we can't get them in the right area up here. And there, you can now see the shape of the magnet and the fields of magnetic flux. A simple demonstration that's used, you know, in science classes all over the world, but it shows something that is invisible, but is just so very, very cool. So just like all quantum uh, physical forces in the universe, we have a better understanding now than we did in medieval times, but we don't have a true understanding of how this stuff works. Our current working theory on magnets is that a magnetic field is produced by an electric charge in motion, and it's theorized that the magnetic field of, of, of a permanent magnet, like, you know, one of these, is the result of electrons within the atom spinning uniformly in the same direction. Whether or not the electron in the material's atoms are subject to the kind of uniform spinning that we're talking about is dictated by the atomic structure, of course. And it's not unlike how whether or not a material is electrically conductive is based on the atomic structure. So you see how the things they mesh, they play together. You can't have one without the other. If the material structure permits magnetism because of the alignment of electrons, it's also going to permit electrical conductivity because of the alignment of the electrons. You know, they, everything works together. And certain types of substances react with magnetic fields. Fewer materials have, or fewer substances have the ability to retain a permanent magnetic charge. And then the weird ones will develop a diamagnetic charge where they are charged in the opposite direction and tend to repel. But, okay, that's enough talk about magnets for today. Next video, we're going to talk about electromagnetism so we can start putting this together with our studies of electricity and electronics. That's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to comment and share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to the patrons. That's it. I'm out. Peace.